in extreme circumstances. This law is inadequate. In order to shame its inadequacy, it is necessary to act outside the law to pursue natural justice. It is not vengeance. Revenge is not a valid motive. It's an emotional response. No, he's not vengeance. He's the beekeeper. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. That little blurb straight out of that Punisher comic book has not, has a whole lot to do with the movie I'm covering now. Because the movie I'm covering now is Jason Statham's The Beekeeper. You know that movie. It came out recently, and it's about, you know, Jason Statham is a beekeeper on this quest to get justice for a friend of his. And, uh, yeah, I'll be covering it right here, right now, in this episode of Moonlight Kingdom Reviews. Let's get into it. Adam Clay is a beekeeper, but someone very important to him is scammed and driven to harm. However, what the, those in power and hung, money-hungry scammers don't know is that Clay is an agent in a classified program called Beekeepers. They underestimate how much of a threat he is. Adam sets out on a quest for vengeance, where he hunts and kills those responsible for the incident. <laughs> Yes, I like freaking the like nineties action movie trailer. I was kind of going for like you know like that um that thing. What's his, what's that guy's name? I don't remember his name, but he was like Sector Seven, and he kept hyping himself up in Revenge of the Fallen. He was like one man alone, betrayed by the country he loves. Now it's only hope to save it. You know, and this one is like one man alone. You know, like just because basically he is. Dude. It's like John Wick meets. Hitman, Silent Assassin meets the Punisher, but with bees. But they don't play as big of a role. You know, the actual physical bees don't play as big of a role as I thought they was going to. You know, I thought there would be like a scene somewhere where like a, he gets a swarm to attack somebody. But like, nah, that, that didn't come. But like, still, the movie was enjoyable throughout, you know, like... uh before we dive into why, though, let's get some background on this piece. Directed by David Ayer of Suicide Squad and Fury and, you know, End of Watch fame. Written by Kurt Wimmer. Kurt Wimmer. Keep mess- messing that up. Kurt Wimmer, director of Equilibrium. With a budget of $40 million, the movie came out on the 14th of January, 2024. Starring Jason Statham, Josh Hutchison, Jeremy Irons, Felicia Rashad. Oh, yeah. All in this movie, all good, man. They're all, they have these stellar performances. So, yeah, that's, oh, that's the background that you need for this movie. Let's dive into what makes this movie, oh, far more than a B plus, dude. Let's get into why this movie is A and above. As you heard in my little 90s action movie, you know, homage there, it's about this guy Clay, he's a beekeeper working on this farm with this sweet old lady, and she gets scammed by this, you know, this, this guy's in charge of a phishing scam. She becomes a vis- the victim of a phishing scam. And it's not just her money that's taken, but it's money of a charity that she manages. So it's millions of dollars disappear. Millions of dollars that we're led to believe was supposed to help people. And she can't bear it. She can't bear to take it. So it costs her dearly. So Clay takes it upon himself to get justice on behalf of this woman because like she did nothing but help people she didn't do no- nothing to nobody and like she was done dirty by these people for no other reason than you know just to make a quick buck this is more than just about like some phishing scam you know this is beyond personal to clay because she it seems from the way this movie is framed like that's why i say this is a lot like hitman blood money because the plot of hitman no not blood yeah, I think it was Hitman Blood Money. Because it's Hitman 2. Right? No, no, Hitman Silent Assassin. It's a lot like Hitman Silent Assassin in that Clay was living a relatively peaceful life in this, like, the middle of nowhere on some farm. And a person he cared about, you know, something happens to them. And it's what stirs him back into back into action. You could make a comparison to John Wick, you know, with him and the dog. But this isn't that, you know. Like, this, is, this isn't him and the dog. It's more like Hitman in the sense because it's like, but unlike Hitman, the in Hitman, the priest that Aiden 47, you know, was li- was living with, like, because at that point, 47 had retired from being a Hitman. 
And now he was just like living a normal life. But then like the priest at the church he was living at got kidnapped and that spurs him back into action. So the thing is in him and two, the priest survives. But in this case, you know, the kindly lady doesn't. And it's ultimately why he's pursuing this level of pursuing these people with this level of vitriol and like I don't know, calmed not he's really calm throughout. But this is this this there's a brutality to his actions, you know, like like he be knocking people out, but like it's a that you get the sense of like if that dude had gotten back up, like oof, he's gonna like he will mess you up, but you know he will mess you up to the point that you won't want to stay down. Like if you manage to survive, you will not want to get up. Like like no paycheck is worth this level, dude. But yeah, so. Getting in, now that the story's out of the way, you know, Josh Hutchison is revealed to be behind the the whole phishing scam. And he he has his, this, like, head of security played by Jeremy Irons, who understands, like, when he finds out, like, you know, who's after him, he finds out, like, oh, the guy's a beekeeper? Like, he said he was a beekeeper? Like, oh, man. Like, I love that. He immediately, it's, that's why I say it takes from John Wick, because it's just like that in that movie. John Wick's dad, when he found out whose car that was, it was like, oh, damn. Like, you're, you're screwed, dude. Like, that's what he basically tells him. He's like, well, when a beekeeper says that you're going to die, you're going to die. <laughs> that's, that's really, like, yeah, he put, a, he assigned basically an entire army of goons to protect this dude because it was his job to. But, like, he knew, like, man, like, a beekeeper is coming to get you because he used to be ahead of the CIA. And, like, when they would send a beekeeper to get someone, that person was as good as God. So, like, when, when you got a beekeeper coming after you, sorry, pal. Like, I guess we should help you, you know, finish with all your living, you know, make your peace with God, get funeral arrangements and stuff. And he tries to tell him that. But, like, this dude, like, Josh Hutchison doesn't quite understand, like, the severity of what he's done, like, of what's going on. They, like, they try to explain it to him. Like, in in John Wick, when dude's kid found out who, like, who John Wick was and his dad explained, like, yo, this guy, like, freaking Baba Yaga, he's a bad dude, man. He's he's freaking, he's the reason we're in power right now. The bodies that he laid down are the foundation of our entire empire, man. It, it, he's coming for you? Like, bruh, he's gonna come. He's not that kind of coming. Like, he's gonna come after you and you'll do nothing. Because you can do nothing. Like, <laughs> But yeah, I like that this movie takes from like certain aspects of other action movies that are really good. You know, like he's ah oh, yeah, uh, I love this. This this movie's a solid movie throughout. Like I'm just rambling at this point, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, this movie, the fights in this movie are pretty good. They're not quite John Wick levels because like I mean we kind of get there towards the end, but you know they're pretty close to it. There's a few of them where Clay doesn't use guns. You know, like, because he doesn't really pick up a gun and, like, blast somebody until, I think, like, the end of the second act where he starts using guns. Because, like, okay, there's no other alternative and everyone around him is packing. Then he'll start using guns. But until that point, prior to that, he was using whatever weapons were around him and his environment to take out the bad guys, which I really appreciate because uh, cause it means that every every bad guy they took out had to go out in a unique way to the last guy, as opposed to just the John Wick pop, pop, pop. There goes dude's head solution. But, um, yeah. And I also like that he isn't just this unstoppable machine that's tearing through everyone without even a scratch being laid on him. And he utilizes his surroundings. It makes for more innovative, you know, more innovative takeouts, like something out of Sleeping Dogs. When, like, Wei Shen would use, like, a cleaver or he'd tuck a guy into a sign or you know, plus, there's a scene where he beats the guy with a stapler, and it's straight out of the ending of Get Smart, where, like, um, I can't remember his name, but, like, the ending of Get Smart, where, like, this buff dude walks in, and, like, Terry Crews and this other guy are trying to pick on him, and he ends up, like, no, 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 that's The Rock. That was The Rock. Like, The Rock was getting annoyed by these two dudes, so he grabbed a piece of paper, held it in front of the guy, and then, bow, stapled the paper to the guy's forehead. It's like that. But there's no paper, just staples and <laughs> oh man, bro, that was it was, 
this movie is funny in places. Let me just say that, man. Like, this is this is really this movie's really funny in places, but um yeah, it's just it's not just that, man. Not just that it's a good action movie, but like you can you can kind of, I personally this has gotta be the first time in a while where like I could relate to a, a like the events of an action movie. Like I can relate to why this person is doing this. Like in John Wick, you can't really relate to someone killing your dog and you wanting to get the revenge. Like you can understand, but like not many people can relate to that. But and it, it like, you know, Hitman, you can people there are people out there who can relate to having a loved one who's taken from them and they want to get the revenge. And you know, this and I don't think anyone can truly relate to what happened with Frank Castle and his family, but like anyone can relate to why dude gets so mad at what happened to this old lady because anyone can get scammed like for real like i've been scammed i've been even i've been scammed so i got like a personal stake in seeing this dude succeed like everybody's been like anybody and everybody can be scammed in one way or another and anybody and everybody has been in some way so like to send a movie around a guy getting revenge because someone he cared about got scammed it's like I don't know, it's the most heroic thing he can do because he's not doing this for himself. It's not his own personal war that he's raging on his own behalf. He's doing it for someone that he cared about who was a victim of something that could happen in reality. And that, like, I mess, I seriously rock with that. Like, that is a solid, that's a solid movie premise you get behind. I like that the beekeeper is an actual beekeeper with, like, bees and stuff. It's not just, like, a code name or something. He actually has bees that he tends to and takes care of. And, like, he's very bee-centric stuff in, like, the stuff he does. Because, well, the beekeepers, their purpose is, like, well, the, they're the beekeepers, you know. They protect the hive. And there's, yeah, the, the, that's what his ideal, you know, that's what their ideal job is to protect the hive the hive being the country that they live in you know the government the the their country is their hive you hear stories about people behind the scenes pulling the strings like the beekeepers aren't the guys pulling the strings so much as they are the guys supplying the strings and making sure the strings don't break so that everything runs smoothly the people behind the scenes not necessarily making things happen they're the people behind the scenes ensuring that those things can happen safely so that the system continues to function effectively. He says it in this line, you know, the one FBI agent is like, we have laws for that. And he goes, yeah, until they fail, then you have me. So, yeah, I like that part. You know, he's not, they're not just guns for hire. They're outside. They're kind of like IMF if you think about it, they're kind of like the IMF, but like way, way more deadly. Yeah. You know, there's running and gunning in both agencies, but, you know, beekeeping emphasized the gunning way more than the running. The running is up to the IMF and Tom Cruise and that, but yeah. Josh Hutchison plays the cowardly heel really well in this movie. He said, like, he wants to play more villainous roles and, like, hey, more power to him. He played this part really well. Like, you totally buy him as this, like, rich, spoiled brat of a dude, like, kind of a man-child. He never had to grow up, so he didn't. He, he was never in a position where he had to grow up, like, properly, so he didn't. He's surrounded by people who are, like, more mature than him. So, like, there was never really a problem that money couldn't solve. So, yeah, that's how he takes, that's kind of the approach he takes, like, when he finds out, like, oh, this beekeeper showed up and he burned down the call center. And like, well, can't you just round up some guys and go get them like he doesn't fully grasp the severity of what he's done even when it's explained to him it isn't until like another call center goes down and the guys who were told to stop that guy go down then it's like oh man like you know this may this might be a little serious you know like he plays the cowardly heel well like he will gladly throw whoever it takes whatever it takes you know to save his own skin <clears throat> and you know he is all about that money he's all about that money and you see that you know like very well in his character it's like his attire how he speaks you know like he's not a professional dude like just his clothes the fact that he like 
skateboard in the office. Anybody who skateboards in the office is anybody in any kind of leadership leadership position who skateboards in the office is a douche. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, dude, why? You are indoors. Like, you are indoors on an upper floor. Like, why are you skateboarding anywhere? Aside to let us know that you're a douche. Oh, whatever. Freaking Tom Cruise in Vanilla Sky, like, would do stuff like that. Like, he would just cruise into board meetings wearing, like, relaxed clothing and everyone else was in suits. This was the movie's way of showing off that, yeah, he's kind of a prick. Dude. Uh, anyway, Jeremy Irons plays his role really well as, like, the, um, the Mikhail Nyquist of the movie. You know, like, Mikhail Nyquist in that, in John Wick, in the sense, like, he's playing his role really well and he tries to keep josh hutchinson safe you know he calls the behem agency and they send someone you know when that doesn't work out he he's the one who rounds up the the seal teams or whatever to try and protect josh hutchinson and his idea to like you know get josh hutchinson into the most like the safest environment not because he likes the guy don't get him wrong don't get the don't get me wrong he doesn't like him (laughs) at all he was totally cool with the idea of beekeeper showing up and capping this guy you know like he's he's the one who says like hey man if the beekeeper says he's gonna get you he's gonna get you there's nothing i can really do so like you know he's doing this because of dude's mom he has feelings for dude's mom and she has asked him to do this and you know it's she and you can tell she's stringing him along he knows she's stringing him along but like because she says like i still think of you sometimes and he's like yeah sometimes you see, which means like not at all or only when i need something <laughs> oh that's just cruel you can tell he, he he still got feelings for her man he knows it she knows it. they both know it but she's the only one who's using that knowledge like to her advantage and to his detriment you know yeah i felt for the dude so yeah um yeah, the, those are the two. He's not really a villain per se. He works for the villain. He works to protect the villain, but he's not a villain per se. The uh, the call center guys, the first guy from the call center, he he's like this like I don't know. He's this sleazy salesman, man. Like he's dressed in these colorful suits. He's he's that guy who will pick a fight with you. He can't fight, but he's got his buddies with him. And he knows they will gladly jump you if you start beating on him. That's why he, he's got like this, you know, crap bravado, man, that like comes from absolute nowhere. And you can tell that he doesn't have any actual courage or like bravery to him. Because once Beekeeper takes out the guys he came with, the dude becomes legit afraid. I think he accidentally takes out one of his own dudes because he's so scared. Like, those people suck. Like, I was like, dude. If you're going to step to somebody, step to them. Don't step to them with the knowledge like, oh, yeah, your buddies are going to step in. Like, no, 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 You have a problem with someone, you have a problem with them. Not you and your buddies. Okay? Just, if you don't have a confidence when your friends aren't around, don't have it when they are. Jesus. Uh, man up and deal with your own damn problems. That first guy, he goes out in interesting fashion. BQ takes him out. The second call center guy was, like, way funnier. Because, like, <laughs> I love that the he calls the, you know, Josh Hodgson's character, and he's, and he's like, oh, yeah, Captain Caveman here wants me to shut everything down. <laughs> he's, I think he's, say what you want about these two guys. They're both jerks, but, like, you could convincingly buy them being able to trick people. The first guy, because, like, he pretends, like, oh, man, like, oh, I'm sorry, this was a mistake, you know, like, Oh, my, my job is on the line. You know, I got a family. Just please just uh, help me out here. And he plays on people's ability to care and their empathy. The other guy is more like, he's more like a car salesman. The kind of guy you would generally imagine if you were picturing a, who's behind this kind of scam. He's just, just, I don't know, a shysty car salesman, man. Like, you deep in his cheap suits and shit. They're not cheap, but like, I don't know. You'd imagine some sweaty guy in a cheap suit trying to sell you a lemon. You know, that's basically what he looks like off the jump. But he's at the head of this 
like huge call center raking in millions every single day, you know, treats his workers like crap. He, you know, treats everybody around him like crap. Even the people who are coming here to like protect them, he treats them like crap because it's like, hey, you're you're messing with the flow here or whatever. He's a jerk and he gets stapled in the face. So like he has a comic, he gets taken out in a comical way. So I like that. You know, this movie's funny, you know, in places you wouldn't think would be funny. So yeah. Um, you know. Uh on to the other good parts of the movie. What else are there? There's this moment in the film where Clay like looks straight ahead as he's explaining to the old lady's daughter. Like, it's basically the movie's laying out its mission statement, like saying that stealing from an elderly person is like stealing from a child. And like, did I do a statement for us? He's like, stealing from an elderly person is like stealing from a child. Like, no, nah, you, you lose the seriousness when I do the rest. Like, in some ways, it's worse. When someone hurts a child, there are people who care, parents to step in. When someone hurts an older person, they are often left to face the hornets alone. And there, like, there, that, you know, that is the mission statement of the movie. It's like why he's doing this and you can totally get behind it because like we all have like grandparents or like, you know, like grandparents or an older aunt or something who doesn't quite grasp technology like we do and can very easily fall victim to this stuff. So yeah, like like I said, man, like it's something you can all get behind, like protecting a loved one. Like this loved one looked after us so many, like for so many years now, it's our turn to look out for them. But some people don't always have that, you know, some people, some older people don't have that person nearby to do something like that, to like help them with matters like this. And that's how they can easily fall victim to things like this. Yeah. So, yeah, like that's, damn, dude, that. I love that. I, I can't, this movie is awesome. Let me just say that. This movie is too damn awesome. Um. So they they bring in a beekeeper to take him down. She goes after him with like a minigun and he takes her out with a can of honey. Not a can, like a, a jar of honey. And it's in the trailer. It's like, hey, it's flammable as heck. Who knew? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't fucking know that fucking bee honey was flammable. Damn. But yeah, it's like like when I was watching Blunt Sports. Like, I didn't know that freaking flour is flammable. <laughs> it's flammable as hell. Who knew? It's so flammable that freaking Jeremy from Cinema Sids was like, yo, do not test to see if flower is freaking flammable. Like, cause, you know, it is. Uh, so he goes on this rampage. He's taking out their guys. He's burning up their call centers. And eventually, you know, they bring in this blonde dude with an Afrikaans accent to take him down. And he's played by Taylor James. You know, I recognize him because he was Samson in this one movie from years back. His character apparently took out a beekeeper a long time ago, and that's why they brought him in. But he says it's because he got lucky. Like, even he understands, like, yo, these beekeepers are not to mess with. He has this line later where he goes, like, like he has the guy at gunpoint, and the, the old lady's daughter, the FBI agent, she's like, he's unarmed. And the guy's like, as long as this guy's breathing, he's armed. Like, because he knows, like, bro, he don't need no weapon to take you out. Like, just, he's dealt with a beekeeper before. He's not going to underestimate this dude or anything about him. You know, like, he's going to do everything he can to take him out. Because last time he fought a beekeeper, he won because he got lucky. And he even though, because it cost him a leg to do that. You know, like, just, so he has, like, this metal leg that he clumps around on. And there's this fight between him and Clay. And it's so bloody and brutal. And the music cuts out. Because fights normally have like some kind of music going to keep the energy, but like you, when when a when a director or an editor or something wants you to focus squarely on the fight and what's going on in it, just focus on the people in it, their reactions and all that, they will cut the music out. It'll just be like you know swords clashing or punches landing or blows or whatever. And this movie has that. It was great. Um, yeah, dude, that part was awesome. Clay wins in brutal fashion, mind you. This movie earns its R rating and then some. So, yeah, I like that Jeremy Irons doesn't, you know, bite it in this movie. As, and, you know, it's it's good. There's no reason for Statham to want his character taken out. Because he hasn't... Yeah, he's sent guys after him, but he hasn't, like, physically tried to stop him. He's no physical threat to him. And he, anything, like, till the last point, he actually, like, Jeremy Irons' character actually tries to talk Clay out of this. Like, you know, because he knows what this dude's capable of. He knows, like, he tried to, like, pull a weapon on him. It ain't gonna do him no good. Like he knows this guy is, he's know what he's capable of. 
he like tries to talk him out of it because that's the one thing he can tend to do. I like that. You know, like yeah. Plus, he wasn't involved in the phishing scam. He wasn't involved in the phishing scam, and Statham was only taking out people who were involved in it directly. You know, he was just a guy assigned to protect Josh Hutchinson's character. And I like that Clay doesn't take out innocent people. Like when he was confronted by this FBI SWAT team, he didn't take them out. He just took them down, just like beat them down. And that was that. So yeah, that's movie. I give this movie a 10. I like that Clay gets away with it. Like he gets away clean, you know, just like John Wick, just like Hitman. And then he gets away clean to live another day. And it's his open-ended thing where, like, you can do a sequel if you want to, but it doesn't, like, blatantly try to set one up. I appreciate that. But it's solid action movie. This movie can exist as its own thing, its own little, like, close loop of a movie. I applaud that. You know, David Ayer, man. David Ayer knows how to shoot action. He knows how to do action movies. He's not just the Suicide Squad guy. He can do other things. And I'm so glad he's out here doing these kind of movies again. You know, like, he shouldn't let one studio tampered movie like tinker with his whole freaking career like it's there was a good stretch of time where he only like was he was seemingly obsessed with the fact that his kind of suicide squad never saw the light of day and like you know i'm kind of glad he's beyond that like because we realistically we know like that ain't gonna happen we're probably never gonna see that cut of the movie and even if he did what, what would it prove that he made a better version of the movie he probably did but it wouldn't make much difference, you know, besides giving old David Ayer some closure. But that's neither here nor there. I give this movie a 10 out of 10, dude. This is, no, 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 9, 9. This is a 9 out of 10 movie because, yeah, Jason Statham's character, he took out the people running the fishing scam and he shut it down for good, but that's not going to bring back any of the money that was lost. That charity that lost money because of this fishing scam still has lost money because of the fishing scam. Yeah, the bank was like fraud detected, fraud detected, but there was no mention that they would find some way to revert transaction or anything. So, yeah, I give it a 9 out of 10 because, yes, this movie is like a 9.8. Let me say that much. 9.8 out of 10. That's what I give this movie because the action, the vis- I could see everything that was going on, the camera work, the directing, all that, the star power in the movie, you know, who's in it, what they were doing was so well done like a 9.8 out of 10 movie this is and could have been a 10 if they'd found some way to like give folks their money back but but like i applaud the movie regardless you know what i mean you know hands down give this movie its flowers anyway this has been another episode of moonlight kingdom reviews uh this episode has been about the beekeeper do we get a like share subscribe all them nice things and uh yeah that's that I stay loose, I stay high, I stay loose, I stay high, I stay loose, I stay high. I could do this all night, cause I do what I like. Yeah, I do what I like, yeah, I do what I like. Sipping goose, sip is right, and I go with the flow. Yeah, I go with the flow, yeah, I go with the flow. Cause I know I'm the show. In the zone, here I go, in the zone, here I go, in the zone, here I go. Yeah, they know I'm a pro. All these